The subject of the show. Because at one point, you guys were all a filthy hobbit. Admit it. All right. I washed my feet a week ago. All right. Can anyone guess when the first soap was made? Yesterday? The third age. Last year, three weeks ago. Last year. Last year, there was some soap made. Yes. 1998. You were definitely not born then. <laughs> 2008. I feel like you probably weren't born then either. Okay. 1400s. 1400s. Okay. Now we're now we're kind of getting somewhere. It was actually the first soap was in 2800 BC. 4800 years ago, you guys. Made by the ancient Babylonians. Mostly in reference to cleaning clothing, textiles, not necessarily humans. Um, but it was. <laughs> it was first mentioned. Oh, I'm, I'm letting him. I'm letting him it was first mentioned in Pliny the Elder's Historia Naturalis. Um, from there, um, it kind of exploded. Many people had their own recordings. There was recordings in ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, even England. Everywhere had their own version of soap. Yeah. So this kind of to clothing as well, but also cleaning humans, no, no, no. also medicinal purposes, right? Now, bless you. Let's talk. What is soap? Soap, in its most basic, simplest form, is a blend of two things, an alkali salt and a fatty oil. Super easy, to the point that people were making it on accident. Right. You guys, that is not so. Rainwater. <laughs> Rainwater would fall down through the ashes of, of a campfire, of a cooking fire, and it would blend with the animal fat from that fire, and it would make this sudsy mixture. And people were figuring out, wow, this is doing something. This is making my, my shirt much cleaner. And so from there, once information began to, to be traded and the world became a little bit smaller, these basic recipes of soap began to emerge, okay? So let's talk about our first ingredient, our alkali salt. It's also called lye. Um, lye is also called caustic soda. Caustic soda, caustic, let's talk about that for a second. Caustic means anything that can burn or erode organic tissue. Organic tissue is me, like you, right? This guy, yeah, her, see? Example. So making lye is incredibly dangerous. You can imagine in the 17th and 18th century, it was super dangerous. Even with today's precautions, it's dangerous. So for that reason, we're not actually making lye with you guys today because we care about you. We like you. Not that guy, don't talk about him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we are not actually making lye, but we are demonstrating how to make lye with an 18th century contraption called a leaching barrel with a lye hopper. Okay, our lye hopper, this is an accurate depiction of what a lye hopper would look like in the 18th century, and then our leaching barrel underneath. Alright, so when we make lye, we actually have to build a layer cake. Chemicals 
all the hydroxyl sodium that removes it from the ash. And so what that's going to do is it's going to filter down through all of our layers that we made and head into our leaching barrel. Okay, so we've got our water. It does take a really long time, which is another reason we're not making it. So that all we have to do is skim it off and then it was like and pour it into a no, bucket that isn't going to erode. Now we've poured into a bucket over time, we'll finally build up enough lye to use. Alright, so now we have our lye. Okay? We'll set that aside. And now we're gonna talk about fats. All fats are not created equal. And in most preference, or in most cases, it came down to preference of what people had readily available. Some places like Mediterranean would use olive oil. And our reference was talking about animal fat because this was the easiest, most readily available ingredient they could find. And the animal fat, also called tallow, is rendered from suet, which is just more animal. So, we have our suet melting down into tallow. And this is going to go low and long like a crock pot. All right? This will be on for a very long time. So now, we have our two ingredients. We have our lye, our caustic soda, and then we have our fat, which in our case we're using tallow. All right, so now we're going to combine our two ingredients, all right? And the most important thing we'll be careful about first, we combine this very carefully because this is an actual uh, chemical reaction. We want to make sure we have cold lye and warm tallow because the, the lye will raise the tallow up to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit instantaneously. So, gently. Not like last week? <laughs> no, thank you. That's why you're burning. It's still cream. <laughs> so we add it in slowly so that we don't over... Um, we don't get excited, I guess. Because we don't want burn. But it's right. So now our two components are, are um, combined. And now we're going to stir. Okay? And we're really going to stir. And we're going to stir. And stir. <laughs> And stir <laughs> up to about two days of stirring. And can you guys imagine 48 hours of doing anything besides sleeping? Anyway, so it could take up to 48 hours. That means two days of, of switching on, stirring, because we like to be clean. All right, so we've reached soapification. We've reached our preferable consistency, which means we've achieved soap soapification. Soap on a holiday. <laughs> that soaponification. Soaponification is just a fancy word for meaning we did it right. Woo! So, honestly, now we've reached soap. That's the name for the chemical reaction of them two combining. So, okay. this is soap. That doesn't mean it smells good. That doesn't mean I necessarily want to clean myself with it. What do I have readily available to make it smell better? Beer. I do have beer, and there is beer soap. Oh, there's beer. Beer. I drink the game. I don't smell. Right? <laughs> um, orange peel is a really great additive. Dried flowers is probably the absolute best add or most common additive that people use because it was easy to collect. All right, everything has its own properties, which help for different reasons. All right, so we add that in expertly, no, 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 no. just like that. Mix it around. Now we can leave it as is, let it start to settle, and we'll hand roll it into balls. That was the most common way to make soap, is to hand form it. Now into the 18th century, they figured out it's actually a lot faster if I mold it. So, here is a mold. Ours has a hinge on it. Um, of, of release, but we would pour this nice liquid soap into our, our mold, okay? And then we're going to let it set for about a week up to a month. Up to a month could be if you're living, let's say, in Seattle. Because what we're trying to do is really alleviate all the moisture out of there, right? We want it to harden. Luckily in Nevada, it takes about four days. It's really great. So, We've got our soap. We've got it poured in. We've got it molded. Now all we have to do is unmold it, cut it, wrap it, we're done. And then use it, really. That's the most important part. But so we unwrap or we wrap our soap, we 
set it aside when we're ready to use it. And you guys, the most important thing to learn, I think, is or to know is soap is one of the leading reasons that we live longer, healthier lives because we figured out that hygiene is pretty important, right? Like mom says, wash behind your ears, wash your feet, like in between your toes. In between your toes. Thank you. When you can. Most importantly, what? Take a bath, right? And use what? Soap. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Come here and get some samples because I want you guys to see this is actually what we're talking about. You can see the different layers, how it mixed together in here. Yep. Sir? Oh, you want this. I know you are. <laughs>